adopting a lowland gorilla is crazy and then it grows up to be this big silverback gorilla it's uh but it's true he had an endless vocabulary of dog noises that sort of went from <laughs> very good very good that's really oh. just danny at five o'clock yeah the movie, the one and only Ivan, is based on a book that is based on real life events. The one and only Ivan! Uh, Brian, this is a fantastic movie. The entire cast did just an incredible job. So my first question to you is what made this special, this role special to you? So many different things. First of all, the story resonated with me. It was a, a beautifully told story in the script based on real facts that happened. Um, adopting a lowland gorilla is crazy, and then it grows up to be this big silverback gorilla, but it's true. Playing a gorilla is, is a lot of fun. I, I was really obsessed with King Kong as a, as a little kid, and I've always been fascinated by gorillas. They're so interesting to me. Brian really laid it out there for me, and. I really wanted to try and take him on a journey, take his character on a journey and see as many sides and make it a very complex character. For him, in many ways, it had the hardest job because none of these animals were real and yet he was constantly having to interact with them. My character also, that was very challenging because I saw him as a human who was flawed. So I related to that, but also a, a, a person who was looking to be, to find the, the better version of himself. I feel like it's a, it was a real great, a fun part to play uh, because it had so many different avenues to, to, to chase down, no pun intended. I, I feel like it, uh, there was a, a place that Bob went from being just a devil may care scamp on the street who thought he had his, the world on the string to, to a dog who, who really appreciated, got to appreciate friendship. Uh, I don't think Bob was, uh, I think Bob was more like the kind of dog that was chased from things. And when he found uh, Ivan's domain, he was embraced. And uh, the uh, lust for his, for <laughs> Snickers upstairs. I also love <laughs> Snickers. I don't, I'm not just like being a hound dog here. I'm talking about, she was, it was a breath of fresh air getting this hang with Stella and Ruby and the entire family, it's, it's what, it, what it's all about. We shot all the scenes with the humans and all the scenes with humans plus animals where we would have puppets or a guy on calipers to stand in. And then the scenes that were just animal to animal, we, were, we shot them completely differently. So we would start by recording the voices, then the animators would animate them, literally bring them to life, and then we would shoot those scenes separately. So it took twice as long as it would normally in that sense. It's a story uh, that creates a, a series of questions at the end of it. Is it right for us to hold animals in captivity? Should we do that? And if I'm hoping that this movie, after the end of it, after you've laughed and cried, that kids, if they ask their parents about the origins of zoos and, and is it right and circuses and things like that, We've done well. We don't want to give answers. We don't have the answers. We want to present the question and let the individuals respectfully work out what is right for them. You know, one was witness to him finding all these different dog noises. You know, he had an endless sort of uh, vocabulary of dog noises that sort of went from to <laughs> An endless, they're amazing. Very, sort good, of. very good, very good. That's really oh. just Danny at five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all for your time. Danny, I really can't wait for Little Demon. <laughs> Helen, stay away from the bears. And uh, Sam, you're going to be a great Merle Haggard, my friend. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Please stay safe. I can't wait to see you all again in person. Be good. <laughs>